What's going on guys? Briar Rabbit here. Welcome to a very long video. This one's going to be all about Bungie's State of the Game blog and the podcast that we released yesterday, kind of in addition to the blog. So we're going to be going through the blog. We're going to be talking about the podcast a little bit, and I'm going to be giving you some thoughts and reactions to a lot of the stuff contained within on both. So Buckle down, it's going to be a long one. We're going to start with all of the updates that are coming on December 5th. But first, an overview. So Bungie put an overview inside the blog, and they outlined some design goals. They wanted to deepen rewards for advanced players. They wanted to provide more player control over obtaining rewards. They wanted to make shards useful by adding things to use them for. And they wanted to provide general quality fixes wherever possible. And in addition to the blog, if you did listen to the podcast, what you'll find is that Bungie recognizes that they made a mistake when designing Destiny 2. They targeted a much more casual player base and kind of left behind what they would call hobbyists. Players who treat Destiny like a hobby. Something People who play it every day or three times a week or continually come back to it day after day, week after week, and have built friendships and groups and communities inside of Destiny. They feel like they've left those players behind, which I feel uh, actually is pretty represented in the community. The people in the community, the hobbyists of the community, do feel like that's the case. And it was interesting listening to the podcast to hear them recognize that. The podcast is really worth a listen to. They also addressed the the XP gate of last week, the news that broke over the weekend and uh, how they addressed it and what they're doing about it and why it was there in the first place and whether or not you you can understand what the, where their point of view is coming from and whether you believe their their kind of explanation of it, that's up to you, uh, but it was nice to get an explanation about it regardless of what, how you feel about it. So let's start off with what's coming in December 5th. First off, armor ornaments will be added to some existing armor sets for more visual customization without losing your shaders or mods. These ornaments will be unlocked by completing objectives specific to each set and are permanently unlocked account-wide just like exotic weapon ornaments. It will be applied to the base pieces that you may already have collected and can now unlock on vendors if not. In Season 2, the following sets have ornaments unlocked in their respective activities. The Vanguard Faction Armor, Crucible Faction Armor, Trials of the Nine Armor, Iron Banner Armor, Dead Orbit Armor, Future War Call Armor, New Monarchy Armor, and the Eater of the World's Raid Lair Armor. This is pretty cool. It gives us another thing to grind for, another thing to unlock, and another way to customize our armor and the look of our characters. In the future, I would like to see more customization of the stats associated with armor in addition to just cosmetic changes to it. I think that would be a lot of fun to be able to rock armor that you've not only customized cosmetically, but also customized to the way you like to play the game. Next up, Banshee has some updates on the weapon and armor mod front. For players wanting to clear some mod inventory space, Rare quality mods will dismantle into gunsmith materials and have a chance to produce legendary quality mod components. For players chasing specific legendary mods, including legendary kinetic mods, Banshee will offer a selection of specific legendary mods for direct purchase with a selection that will rotate daily and cost legendary shards and mod components. This is a good step forward for mods. Uh, right now, mods are, well, frankly, they're annoying. <laughs> the, the whole setup of mods, they don't make that much of an impact to the performance of the guns, um, with some few exceptions. And the ones that do seem to be very, very hard to get. So this will allow us to kind of disregard rare blue quality mods, which is good because... Frankly, there's not enough inventory space to really manage them properly. 
Um, so we'll just be able to turn those into the gunsmith and just really worry about the legendary stuff. And he'll be selling specific mods that you can just purchase. So if you need kinetic mods for primary weapons or if you're really working on a solar build, you can really just kind of specify which kind of mods you need to buy uh, and kind of just disregard the rest of the stuff. Now, that stuff will be rotating in his inventory, so you may have to wait for the mods you want, but at least there will be a direct path to purchase the mods you want. The mod system still needs a pretty big overhaul. Uh, the inventory system definitely needs one. And then what the mods actually do, just they need some spice to them. They need a little more interesting stuff in them. And while I can respect that they wanted to start off mods as... Uh, not overpowered, I would like to see a power bump in what mods do so that we can actually really start looking for the mods that will help us with the activities that we enjoy the most. Next up for December 5th, for players chasing a world legendary or looking for masterworks, Master Rahul will sell some of his rumored horde of legendary engrams for legendary shards. So there's going to be a bunch of things to spend legendary shards on. So right now, you may want to start saving those things. Um, legendary shards right now, there's pretty much, I think, two ways to use them. You can buy uh, exotic engrams from Xur, or you can use them to infuse armor. Um, right now, I'd start saving those things, because coming with the December 5th update, there is going to be a ton of places to sell legendary shards. Some of them are going to be really expensive, too. Uh, we'll keep going. December 5th, changes regarding uh, reputation tokens. Daily challenges will have reputation token awards increased across the board. So the more you do your daily challenges, the, the more tokens you'll get. You'll get more tokens per daily challenge, which is good. Cage treasure chests still offer variable rewards, but now guarantee at a minimum a payout of destination-appropriate reputation tokens. I'm sick of getting empty cage chests, so I guess that's good. Strikes will drop a larger number of Vanguard reputation tokens, which is certainly good because right now there's not really any loot reason to go and do the strikes. Common quality destination resource tokens will have the drop rates increased to 100% and values per token increased as well by 50% for common quality tokens, that's the green ones, and 250% for rare quality tokens. On the balance, reputation required per reward engram will increase. Destiny factions by 37% and gunsmith by 50%. It should, it sounds like though, it should be a net of you get more engrams faster. Leviathan raid tokens will re be redeemed at Benedict immediately upon obtaining a token instead of requiring a full raid clear before unlocking. So... They're not getting rid of the token system. They're not adding another reward system on top of the token system, but they are trying to at least make the token system feel more rewarding. I think this is a very short-term solution. Um, the token system, it's just too much of a disconnect between completing the activity and getting your reward. So you don't actually remember, you don't have this story of, you know, I, I was in the middle of this badass nightfall with two of my best friends, and boom, I got that exotic to drop that I've been wanting for months. You know, those stories don't exist in Destiny 2, and I think that's mainly because there's this buffer between completing a challenge or completing an activity and then going to collect your loot using the tokens. I, I don't think it's a good system. It'd be okay. The reputation token system, I think, would be all right if it was a secondary system to kind of make up for people who didn't get the drops they wanted or they just had bad RNG in their endgame rewards. Like, it'd be fine as a secondary system, but I do think they need to add rewards back to the end game screen so you immediately finish a challenge or a activity and you just boom you get your rewards it's a much more viscerally satisfying thing that way uh, and then the tokens you can be rewarded tokens so that yeah if you didn't get what you want maybe you got a chance like a second chance and if you kind of grind out activities then you you increase your chance to get the drops you're looking for 
So those are all the changes that are coming on December 5th with Season 2 in the Curse of Osiris DLC. But a week later, on December 12th, we'll get another update providing a bunch more changes. One of which is really interesting, the Masterworks Weapons. So here's the deal with Masterworks Weapons. Legendary weapons will drop as or be upgraded to become Masterworks versions. Masterworks versions, they look like the same legendary weapon. The, the example provided was the Uriel's Gift. It looked like a Uriel's Gift, but there were some changes to it. Masterworks will have a few advantages over the baseline legendary weapon. They track and display the number of kills with that weapon, the choice between total count or crucible only count. They generate orbs for you and your allies on multi-kills. They add weapon stat bonuses that are selected randomly from a small pool and are re-rollable. Masterworks drop from any source of legendary weapons for characters above 250 power. Unwanted Masterworks can be dismantled into materials that can upgrade an existing legendary weapon into a Masterwork. And the Raid and Trials of the Nine Weapons will have a very high chance to be Masterworks. We have future plans to extend Masterworks to other gear and expose your kill counts in more places. So, bunch of things about the Masterworks weapons. First of all, it gives us another thing to grind for, and that's cool. It really reminds me of... Uh, after House of Wolves, they gave us tokens that could be used to upgrade our old weapons to the current light level. Uh, and it was fun to try and uh, collect those tokens to allow us to kind of upgrade our favorite weapons. Fatebringer was very popular. A lot of the vanilla Destiny weapons were very popular. This really reminds me of that. It's going to take a lot of the legendary weapons and improve those into Masterworks weapons. Now, some of the changes are a little lackluster. Some of them could definitely be improved, but it does sound cool. So let's talk about tracking and displaying the number of kills with each weapon. That's kind of cool, but is it really going to affect anybody? What would be really neat and what would be really useful is if it allowed you to track and display your KD ratio in PvE or PvP, or maybe the amount of damage per second it's been doing, uh, in PvE, so it allowed you to really look at your weapons and see your performance with that weapon. If you could see your KD ratio with a specific weapon in the Crucible right on the weapon screen, I could see that is immediately useful, and that'd be really cool. So instead of just a kill count with Crucible, that just shows me my favorite weapon. A KD ratio would show me my most effective weapons, and I, I'd like that idea better. Generating orbs for you and your allies on multi-kills this is going to make your fire team stronger in PvE. Depending on your effectiveness, it could also work for you in PvP. Uh, Multi-kills can be difficult to get in PvP right now, uh, but it does add some reward for getting them and may add some reward for getting out there and actually trying to get them instead of just kind of sitting there uh, in your spawn just waiting for the enemies to come to you. Adding weapon stat bonuses that are selected randomly for a small pool in our rerollable. So the example they give is reload speed. Um, now there's a bunch of different things that could be in there. Remember, this is stat bonuses, not perks. So this isn't going to be a mod, but the one they show is a reload speed, and it has, it has the number 10 there. So my assumption is at this point, and we'll know more later, that that 10 is like a 10 point buff to the weapon's reload speed. And reload speed is one of the stats that are included in impact, range, stability, handling, reload speed, right? So you got all of those five stats that could potentially be masterwork weapons. Now, that could be really interesting. Raising a weapon's impact by 10 points could be a difference maker for certain weapons. Raising its range could be a difference maker. Stability, handling, reload speed, all of these things could be a difference maker. A plus 10 point buff to reload speed, it, it doesn't sound that much, but if that's the difference maker on impact, if that is an available stat that you could select, that could be the difference between, you know, time to kills, make it a weapon competitive in the Crucible or not competitive in the cru Crucible. And that's interesting. So it'll be, it'll be fun watching this system develop. It'll be fun watching... Uh, the weapon meta in PvP and in PvE 
kind of shift if this is actually as effective as I'm hoping it is. But again, we're just going to have to wait and see. Uh, also on December 12th, faction armor and weapons will be unlocked for purchase for legendary shards and faction tokens on most faction vendors. All five armor slots will always be present, and weapons will rotate weekly on factions that have them. Slots will be unlocked by claiming reward engrams from the respective faction. You'll get credit for engrams you may have already claimed since launch. This is basically how it worked in Destiny 1. Uh, and I'm glad it is returning to that system because the current system they've been using for the Faction Rally and for Iron Banner, it just didn't seem fair. It was so RNG-based, you could open package after package after package in Iron Banner and never get that beautiful Titan helmet that you've been looking for. I'm glad to see this. It seems like it should have been in the game right from the get-go, but I'm glad to see it coming back. Zer has some new offerings for players collecting exotics. Every week, you'll be able to acquire one of the new faded engrams using legendary shards that will decrypt as exotics that aren't already in your collection. A simpler three of coins that boosts exotic drop rates from any source for four hours. No obscure tracking stacking mechanics or need to reapply before every boss. These cost legendary shards and you can have as many as you like. I've been pretty vocal. I never liked the three of coins system. It just seemed like a pain in the ass. It seemed arbitrary. If they wanted to reward more exotics, then just reward more exotics. Don't force me to remember to pop three of coins all the time. This, at least, you don't have to pop multiples all at once. You don't have to do it after you kill every boss or after every PvP game. Uh, it does last for four hours, so I think it's a better system than the old three of coins system. But again, if you want to reward more exotics, just reward more exotics. Forget about this whole three of coins thing. It's just annoying. It, there's no reason for it. Commander Zavala and Lord Shax will sell gift consumables for legendary shards that can be used during a strike or crucible match that will serve the following functions. Grant bonus rewards to everyone in the activity upon completion, friend or foe alike. I gotta give my enemies loot. <laughs> Award anything from faction tokens to a round of exotics for everyone in the match. So that guy who's been teabagging you the whole game, he's going to get the exotic that you got for your whole team. Still, it's a cool thing. I like this. One of my favorite things when one of my per people in my fire team says, oh, I just popped one of these. You know, that's great. Hey, man, that's awesome. It's just a cool team player thing to do. I like things like this. It's awesome. Exploit safeguards on chests and resort nodes are greatly relaxed and players should encounter them less frequently. Even if they do, drop rates for tokens are only reduced by 30% instead of 0% and Glimmer will be unaffected. We want to associate a visual indicator with this in the future, but we weren't able to pull that off in this update, but we hear you. So this is the cooldown. Uh, when you are running around getting chests and resource nodes, you can basically get them too fast, and the game institutes a cooldown where you just stop getting them. doesn't matter how many chests you open, you're just not going to get anything from it. Uh, and it's been really annoying. There's no, there's no way to know that it's happened. You just basically have to stop getting them. So they're reducing it down to 30% of what you should have gotten instead of 0%. But still, like... You know, hey, if I find a bunch of chests, man, reward me for finding a bunch of chests. If I'm if I'm the kind of player who just likes looking for chests and that's fun, then let me do that. I, I don't understand why this has got to be a thing. Vendors will now beckon you to hand in your reputation tokens only when you're carrying enough to earn a reward engram. That's just nice. That's just a nice quality of life thing. Uh, there's also some things that are coming after December 12th. These are things that are in the works, but don't necessarily have a firm date yet. Some of them are coming in January. Some of them will be coming uh, after January. So here, here is a list of those things. Better incentives for players who complete challenging prestige activities. We're targeting January update to provide better incentives to complete prestige activities. This has got to be high on the priority list because right now, there's a prestige mode for the raid, there's prestige nightfalls, and absolutely no reason to engage with that content whatsoever because the rewards just aren't there. Uh, how those things got made without thinking about this at the beginning is beyond me. I'm glad they're addressing it, 
Uh, but God, like how how do you make the hardest activities in the game not have rewards? Like that's craziness. Better rewards and replay value for strikes, adventures, and lost sectors. In December, we will be introducing a heroic strike playlist and more generous strike rewards, which is great because as it stands, strikes are just one of those things that is not a rewarding activity. There's no reason to engage in strikes because your time is better spent in a bunch of other activities. So if they can make strikes a rewarding experience loot wise then increases the amount of activities that we have available to us to level up our characters so this is good news rewards for adventures and lost sectors are still on our radar but will not be delivered for our december update so hopefully what we see are adventures and lost sectors getting specific loot that's what i'd love to see what i suspect we'll see are that we'll just start seeing more legendaries or something like that or maybe mastercraft weapons coming out of that but what I'd love to see is strikes, adventures, lost sectors having specific loot associated just with that strike, adventure, or lost sector individually. So if you knew that there was a great weapon that came out of an adventure on IO, you could go and grind that adventure over and over again to try and get that very special legendary or very special even if it was a blue, I'd love to see that happen. We'll see if it does. Uh, my, you know, my hopes are high because what I'm reading in this update gets me very excited for the future of Destiny because it very much speaks to, hey, we are listening and here are the improvements we're making. We made mistakes in the past, but we're working to fix them. And that's very exciting to me. Private matches for the Crucible. How about that? Still targeting early 2018 and expect to have better insight to exact timing in the new year. My hopes are they will be updating us regularly about private matches. We're also moving ranked PvP to the top of our priority list for next year to support the competitive community. This is something that is desperately needed in Destiny 2. The fact that the competitive play playlist isn't a ranked PvP mode was a bit shocking to me at the beginning, and it's great that they're on here. It's great that this is on here and that they're acknowledging that they're working on it. They are working on this. Uh, I don't expect it to come early in the new year. Maybe it'll come with DLC 2. Maybe it'll come with uh, Comet 2 or the kind of the Taken King style expansion that we're expecting in September of 2018. Um, but it is gl I'm glad to see that they're working on it. Crucible tuning is like, I'm sorry, Crucible tuning like adjusted supremacy scoring and better spawning rules. In December, we will introduce additional updates and bug fixes, bug fixes intended to improve these areas of the Crucible. Great. Better incentives for completing Crucible matches and penalties for quitting competitive games. A quitter penalty system is currently in development, and you can expect an update on the deployment of this system in the new year. So again, we got to wait for the new year, but they're working on it. And this is exciting to me because it's very annoying to go into the competitive playlist and two or three of your teammates leave, and you're just sitting there, you know, in a 1v4. It's very annoying. Continued improvements to Iron Banner and Faction Rallies, including uniqueness of rewards. The next Iron Banner and Faction Rally will introduce improvements in both of these areas. And they talk a little bit more about that in the December update. So Iron Banner and the Faction Rallies both had this really arbitrary RNG-based token system reward. That's changing. It's going to get better. They talked about this previously. A lot of people were pissed that it wasn't in the last Iron Banner. Uh, but it will be in the next one, and that's very exciting. Changes to make the mod economy more interesting and impactful. The Gunsmith will have some new updates to how mods are acquired. We saw that before. And they're also exploring more updates to this system in the new year. And that's very exciting. What I'd like to see is more mods that make a real impact to how a weapon performs, what armor does, you know, like really interesting mods. I'd even like to see some exotic mods. That'd be amazing. I'd also really like to see the inventory and systems for sorting your mods get revamped. In fact, to be honest with you, the whole, the whole inventory system really needs to get looked at 
hard. Your whole vault space inventory. The fact that we're talking about vault space again in Destiny 2 is somewhat upsetting to me. After we talked about it so much in Destiny 1, it seemed like a perfect time to just revamp the vault space or the way the vault works and make it much more flexible, much bigger. Uh, and the fact that it just seems like the same vault that we had in Destiny 1 is pretty disappointing to me, honestly. Ongoing improvements to exotics, including adjustments to reduce instances of duplication. We plan to tune underperforming exotics and will continue to make targeted updates and improvements. Duplication protection will be added for exotics in the new year. I love this. We plan to tune underperforming exotics. I like that. We don't plan to nerf overperforming exotics. We plan to tune underperforming exotics. So make all the exotics feel exotic. That's exciting. New ways to spend surplus currency and materials. Looking at you, legendary shards. So there's going to be a ton of ways to spend legendary shards now. You'll be able to spend them, uh, spend tokens and legendary shards on vendor inventory. Uh, you'll be able to spend them on Zer. Zer will have new items as well. Uh, you'll be able to spend them basically all over the place. So start saving those legendary shards. You're going to want them after the DLC. Uh, also, they talk about the emote interface. We've talked about this before. Uh, you're basically going to have like an, a, a wheel of some sort where you'll be able to uh, plug in multiple emotes and have like a selectable list of emotes. So you can have salty, spicy ramen, six shooter, and flip out all at the same time. So instead of just being able to have that one customizable emote slot, you'll have a bunch of customizable emote slots, which is a nice improvement. Uh, not all that important. So overall, I got to say this. I'm actually really excited about these updates, and I also am really excited about the tone that Bungie is taking about the future of Destiny 2. They acknowledge that they messed up by making a game that really targeted casual players, tourists they like to call them and neglected the hobbyists, the players who are very hardcore about Destiny, who come back and play day after day, week after week. And they're going to be making changes to help fix this. I think that the PvP players are still going to be looking for more. Yes, we're going to get private matches early in 2018. Ranked play is going to be coming sometime in 2018, but we don't know when. That doesn't really address the fundamental issues that a lot of PvP players have in that they feel like the game is boring. I don't personally share that opinion. I enjoy PvP and Destiny 2. A lot of people see it that way. I can understand and I respect their feelings and I don't see anything here that is going to change that. However, we will also be getting a sandbox update with the December DLC or with the Season 2. Uh, that will be... That will the notes for that will be released closer to the launch of Curse of Osiris. Maybe in there, there will be some things that pull PvP players back in. I don't know. For players who are already enjoying Destiny 2, Destiny 2 is about to get even better, and that's awesome. For players who are a little bit on the fence, hopefully there's some stuff in here that's going to drag them back in, right? They're, it's going to really get them excited. I think the Master of Work Weapons is a cool system. I can see some ways to improve it for sure, uh, but it gives you something to grind for, and it gives you some customizability in your weapons, and it gives a little bit of depth to those weapons as well, being able to change the stats on the weapon between reload speed, handling, stability, range, impact. That could really allow you to customize a weapon to exactly how you like to use it, and that could be a lot of fun. People who just hate the game People who are just disappointed about the game because it didn't it didn't follow up on what they were expecting out of Destiny 2, to be honest, I don't see anything in here that's really going to change that opinion. And that's sad, I guess. But if you're willing to stick with Destiny, I do think that Destiny 2 is going to get better and better as time goes on. I think that Bungie has realized their shortcomings and are now working to improve it. That's disappointing to a lot of people. A lot of people, really, including me, wanted Destiny 2 to be a massive upgrade over Destiny 1. In a lot of ways, it's not even as good as the Destiny 1 we left. The Destiny 1 that was post-Rise of Iron and post the 2017 April update. 
a lot of great stuff was in that game that got left behind. Private matches. Private matches. The fact that Destiny 2 didn't launch with private matches is amazing. So I am excited about this. There's a ton of great stuff in here. I can't wait for December 5th. I can't wait for December 12th. I can't wait to start collecting uh, Masterworks weapons and upgrading my favorite weapons to the Masterworks quality set. Uh, I think it definitely could increase the amount of grind in the game, which I think is totally lacking right now. The, the exotic weapon stuff, I th they're really going hard on... You're going to get all the exotic weapons as fast as you want. And I don't know. I don't personally agree with that. Other people are going to say, no, it's good. You you want to have all the weapons available to you all the time. That's a difference of opinion. I like the grind. I miss the grind of Vanilla Destiny a little bit. And, uh, you know, really they're doubling down on not only are you going to get all the exotic weapons you can handle, but we're going to make sure that the ones you're missing, you're definitely going to be able to either buy from Xur or our loot system is going to auto-correct and give them to you instead of just giving you duplicate after duplicate. And getting duplicate after duplicate is frustrating, for sure. So there's a lot in here. A lot of stuff is very exciting. I think it's going to take us some time to play the game after the December 12th update and really kind of unpack what's going on here and how these things actually impact our play of the game. How much they actually play into what our daily routine becomes for the hobbyist players like myself. I am very optimistic about the future of Destiny 2. Listening to the podcast that they put out yesterday, it told me that they understand the player's issue with the end game of Destiny 2. It told me that they understand their mistake and that they are working to correct it and they value the player base that is the hobbyist player base. And I think that's important. So it's a long video, guys, 30 minutes long. I wanted to get this one out. I know it's uh, later than everybody else, but frankly, I wanted to give it some time to kind of settle in, to kind of be able to think about some of this stuff a little bit more. And uh, I'm sure we'll be talking about it more on the Destiny Community Podcast tonight. I'm sure I'll be talking about it more on stream today. I'll be streaming today over on Twitch. Uh, playing some more Destiny, uh, trying to save some tokens and some legendary shards for the new update. So that's going to do it for this one, guys. Let me know what you guys think about all the changes, uh, what you guys think about Masterwork weapons. I'd like to see the Masterwork actually get expanded into armor. I think that'd be a great idea uh, to be able to actually adjust the stats on your armor. Yeah, man, give me that. So thanks, thanks so much for watching. Hit that like button if you like the video. Hit subscribe if you're new to the channel, and I'll see you guys next time.